the craziness going on right now. All right, I see we go ahead and get started. Um, so uh, thank you again for joining us. We're gonna be talking uh, to three of our alumni from uh, the Master of Interior Architecture program. Um, start with some introductions. So we have on the call today, um, Rutucha uh, Chittakar from uh, our 2017 alum. Um, she's working at Hayes Group Architects. Um, we've also got Kristen Keene, a 2015 alum uh, from Jones Studio. Kiana Te Tirani from our, graduated in 2017, uh, working at Gensler. And then my name is Christy Brown. I am a graduate coordinator here at the design school. Um, I am one of two who um, are here to help you through the application process. So if you're one of our, our prospective students, we're here to answer any questions about that. Um, we're also here as your advisor throughout the program. So our current students recognize us. Um, so what we're going to do is go ahead and I'm going to let each of them present a little bit about their experiences in the program, um, some projects that they've worked on after they've graduated. Um, and then I'm going to present a little bit uh, briefly about the application process again for any prospective students who are on the, the webinar. Um, and then we'll have a time for a uh, question and answer at the end of the, uh, the presentation. So um, if you have any questions, please don't put them in the chat, put them in the Q&A and we'll get to them um, at the end of the presentation. Okay, take it away. <laughs> uh, hi everyone. Uh, good evening. My name is Rituja Chittekar. I uh, graduated from ASU uh, in 2017 in Master of Interior Architecture program. Just to give you a little bit of background, I did my undergrad in uh, architecture from India. Um, after uh, my master's in interior architecture, I moved to Bay Area, California, and I joined Hayes Group Architects. Uh, it's a local firm uh, in Bay Area that focus on commercial and mixed use um, uh, shell projects as well as uh, workplace interiors. I joined the workplace interiors uh, um, studio because uh, I've always been interested uh, in uh, developing and designing uh, workplace studios or workplace uh, spaces. Um, that, was, that was also our uh, last semester uh, studio. And I had uh, some research uh, that focused on in my thesis uh, in my undergrad. Uh, so if you could go to the next slide, please. Okay, thank you. So this was my first project when I started working um, at Hayes Group. Uh, I started with like really uh, baby st uh, steps like working on schematic plans, uh, contacting reps for finishes and materials and slowly, put, slowly putting my 100% uh, of time in this project. Uh, this was a six story about uh, 400,000 square feet office space uh, for one of the top three tech companies. Being an elite client, it was very important for us to keep uh, the vision clear and follow their design guidelines. Um, this is a side-by-side -side comparison of our initial rendering and final build space of a library in collaboration space. We designed the interior uh, to maximize the light, uh, creating more open and collaborative spaces, uh, add accent of colors in furniture to boost uh, the positive environment in the office space. Something that I learned very early in this project was the focus on detail and customizing the market available products fit the client's uh, needs. Uh, if you could go to next slide, please. Okay, so this next um, project was actually a small media room that was part of the previous project that I uh, worked on. Um, we designed a specific uh, room for a client's need uh, after the initial phase was built. Uh, the users requested for a smaller space, um, uh, small spaces that became like projects in, uh, in itself. And the purpose of this room was to create like a space to watch and review their social media content. The main focus here was um, the audiovisual design and the acoustics for the room. Um, when it comes to specialized rooms, it's important to keep, uh, it's important to keep in mind uh, the technical aspects uh, of the design as well. The mechanical and electrical coordination to meet the, uh, the criteria was important aspect of the brief. The next project, please. Okay, 
So this project was a really fun one. Um, a, a client wanted to create an Insta-worthy spot for their employees. Uh, that's something that we, we are seeing a lot in workplace uh, uh, design nowadays. Uh, something that's fun and creative uh, space, but something that's uh, for taking pictures and posting on social media and promoting uh, uh, promoting their uh, work life uh, you know, on social media for uh, for the new generation to join in. Um, after going through numerous initial design concepts, we designed a hundred square feet uh, space that looks like uh, when you enter a rainbow inside a glass envelope. Uh, these are actually individual custom pieces of felt that is installed uh, um, on the wall to give an illusion, uh, to uh, give uh, a colorful background uh, for uh, taking pictures. Uh, there's also a mirror to give an uh, illusion of depth uh, uh, to the room. Uh, again, an important aspect here was uh, specifying each color, size, thickness uh, for uh, a smooth install. This project seemed very simple on the paper, but uh, it's a coordination with millwork installer, uh, getting the correct light temperature in the room and budgeting was very critical. Uh, if you could go to the next one. So I wanted to include this project uh, just to show some traditional workplace design uh, for a law firm. Uh, every client is not the same, and uh, this is an old law firm which needed a refurbishment for their office space. Uh, we try to give a new look uh, to their office space through the finishes and materiality, but they had very traditional uh, cubicle spaces instead of more open offices. Um, I uh, really learned that uh, as a designer, it's more important to remember uh, that a client's brief and their taste, uh, uh, how critical that is uh, when you uh, propose your design. Our next project, please. Uh, this was another office space for a tech company. Uh, one trend that we see now is companies approach to, pro uh, to provide a livable workspace. The line between office and home is uh, blurring day by day as we saw this year uh, very well. Uh, the break room is in this building uh, became, uh, they, they wanted to create a break room that uh, would be become a space to hang out during the breaks, a quick sweat session with coworkers uh, or a breather between the meetings. Uh, next one. Uh, I wanted to highlight one important aspect uh, as a, um, uh, as a as an interior designer, uh, which is the finish board. Uh, something that I do very frequently and at every stage of project finishes are very vital and very important part of uh, the uh, interior space. They define a theme. They give you. Uh, they give a function to the space. Um, and uh, something to note is the clear specifications and uh, um, noting uh, all the finishes uh, throughout the process will help you um, not only with like you know the client meetings but also during the construction phase. Uh, next one. Uh, same one goes for furniture. Um, I try to keep myself updated with new products and furniture pieces. Uh, developing a good relationship with vendors and product reps goes a long way for any designer. I um, try to arrange like lunch and learns uh, uh, for our office, uh, attend, attend Neocon uh, every year to keep uh, myself and our office library updated. Uh, next one. Uh, lastly, I wanted to include a current project uh, um, that I'm working on. Uh, it's a makerspace, uh, again, for a tech company uh, here in Silicon Valley. Um, we are at a very basic schematic stage uh, right now, but wanted to highlight the use of uh, software and the uh, we are using the BIM softwares and how uh, it has helped us not just for uh, construction drawing sets, uh, but also for initial uh, schematic 3D renderings. And something that we um, constantly see is that uh, when we make changes uh, after client's review, it, uh, it uh, actually reflects very well on uh, construction drawings as well. So um, something that's very critical as a designer nowadays 
is keeping up with all the software and um, new uh, updates that come through um, uh, for any designer. I think that's it. Thank you. Hi everyone, my name is Kirsten Keen. Uh, I currently work at Jones Studio, which is in Tempe, just actually down the street from the design school. Um, I went, excuse me, I was accepted into the Master of Interior Architecture, their three plus program and started in the summer of 2012. Um, so we were full time uh, in studio for that first summer, um, which is actually a really incredible experience. It was very intense, uh, much different than I expected. Um, just give you a little bit of background. My uh, undergraduate degrees were in journalism, public relations was one of them, and then psychology was the other. Um, so I definitely came in not understanding what a studio class was on the first day. Um, and it was a really fun experience to all of a sudden be thrown into this world of design. Um, definitely made some incredible friendships. Um, I actually can count a lot of, I'll go into this, but I can count a lot of my instructors now as colleagues. Um, and it's been really a really fun ride. Um, if you want to go to the next slide, I'll just kind of jump through what I'm doing, uh, what I have been doing since graduation. Um, so my first job after graduation actually brought me out to Seattle. I worked for Perkins and Will, which is a huge international uh, architecture, interiors, and everything firm. Um, I uh, <laughs> I got this job through. Um, I'm sorry, I need to start over. I feel like I did not cover my uh, experience in grad school quite yet. So in addition to the three years um, or involved in that, there were some pretty incredible experiences. We did get to travel as a studio of four of us um, to San Francisco. Uh, we actually, I believe, went to the offices of Hayes Architecture where Ratusha worked um, among other firms and saw some of their incredible work um, during our lap, uh, let's see, what is 2014, 2015, time really hasn't had much meaning in a while. I'm sure you all agree. Um, so our um, final year, the fall semester, we were actually in studios that were combined with other um, design disciplines. So we were combined with architecture students, the graphic design students, um, and my particular studio traveled for research for our project. Uh, we traveled to Montreal, New York, and Washington, D.C. to study exhibition design. So we visited all kinds of museums um, and got to talk to the curators and staff and other clients of these places. Um, and then we came back to school and we actually, sorry, I'm showing, I should have showed visuals of this, but we actually got to um, design and construct an exhibit, a real life exhibit in the ASU Art Museum. And our studio class actually took place in the museum. We were on display as part of the exhibit um, ourselves throughout the semester. And then that culminated in constructing and then having a grand opening for this exhibition, um, which was on architect Glenn Murcutt, who's an Australian architect. Um, and then our last semester, I did a thesis project with another student um, in my cohort um, on informal learning spaces, so hallways, um, kind of all these places where you would have um, informal interactions, maybe with other students or instructors or staff or something like that, um, where this informal learning and informal interactions take place that are still important to an educational experience. Um, and that was amazing as well. Um, and then we graduated in 2015. Um, so then I was hired to go to Seattle at Perkins and Will um, during my graduate career, I was also very involved in the American Institute of Architecture Students, the AIAS group. Um, I started off um, prior to school, I was never, or prior to grad school, I was never really um, involved in student organizations. And this one, I, you know, they actually kind of approached me, they wanted to build their membership and get to know new people. Um, and so I thought I'd join. Um, and ultimately, I became their uh, events coordinator for a year. Um, with that experience, uh, I ended up going to this organization's um, national conference over New Year's. And even though I wasn't running, I wound up being elected to their national board of directors. So during my last year of school, I was able to travel to Washington DC about five times um, to uh, be part on their national board meetings. Um, and I also uh, helped plan their next um, international or their next national conference that took place in San Francisco. 
Um, so there were a lot of great opportunities that came out of being part of graduate school that then really gave me some more professional experience. Um, and because of that involvement and people that I met through that organization, they introduced me to somebody at Perkins and Will in the Seattle office. Um, and the person that I knew happened to be doing marketing for the San Francisco Perkins and Will office. Um, and when I interviewed for the Seattle position, um, they asked me, would you prefer to do design or marketing? Um, because they, had, you know, they knew my background. Um, and I said, whatever you need most right now. So they immediately said marketing. And I thought, well, I don't know what marketing for design is like, but I'll go ahead and try that out. Um, and it was a really incredible experience. What ended up happening is you really, in marketing, you get to learn the business of architecture. Um, you become part of almost the leadership team. Um, you're very involved with a lot of the decisions that are made in winning new work, bringing new projects into the firm. Um, and you get a, you know, you're, I probably I saw much more of the leadership than I did of kind of those who are my peers or who were just recently hired and recently out of school. Um, but it was a really fun experience. Um, and Perkins and Will is a great firm. They have a lot of uh, resources, a lot of benefits. Um, but I've kind of covered the gamut in terms of firms to work for. Um, as much fun as Seattle was, uh, I was a bit too wet. <laughs> it was a bit too cloudy for my preference. So after a year, I did move back to Arizona, and I thought I would take that time to get back into the design world. Um, here, real quick, I'll actually cover these images. Sorry, I'm jumping all over here. Um, but we, during that year in Seattle, our office moved into another um, building in the Rainier Tower. If you've ever seen that one, it's the one that looks kind of like it, like it was chopped up or like chewed up by a beaver at the bottom and then goes straight up. Um, so that's that office that you see there on the right. And then on the left, um, because of marketing deadlines, you're submitting proposals, responses to re requests for qualifications. Um, and some of them can be pretty involved. Um, so on the left, you see that I took over a conference room for a couple of days all to myself so that I could spread out all of the threads of the um, proposal that I was preparing. Um, and it was an office of about 120 people. And for a while, I was the sole marketing person trying to win work for them. Uh, which is a really cool experience. But you can go ahead and go to the next slide, Christy. Um, so when I moved back to Arizona, I was fortunate to get a position with Architecton in Tempe, a very prestigious firm. Uh, there I worked on a few different types of projects. Um, before this one that's showing here, um, I worked on the Phoenix Country Day School um, Shepherd Hall remodel or their Welcome Center remodel. Um, which was a really fun project. Um, but this one here is my favorite, the Helios Education Foundation. Um, they're a nonprofit organization. And you think, wow, a nonprofit can build a building like this. Um, this nonprofit in particular uh, used to actually be a student loan company. So they actually had a lot of money and then to kind of turned their mission around um, and stopped giving out student loans and instead started funding other education nonprofits. So what they wanted to do with this space was not only create their own workplace in Arizona, but to provide workspace for other education nonprofits, to provide a community space for these large education conversations in the state to happen um, and other education events. This one was very fun to work through. My favorite parts of the design process are programming and talking with the clients to understand them better, to understand their behavior um, and what they really need in a space. Um, my big, big thing as it comes to design is actually understanding human behavior um, and making sure that every design is very client specific and actually responds to their needs and wants. Um, so this one was very fun. There was a lot of outdoor components or indoor outdoor transitions. Um, I thought it was a lot of fun to create floor plans and this one actually involves using watercolors to help illustrate and tell that story of this intrinsic environment that brings the indoors and out or indoors and outdoors together. Um, and it's a really beautiful space. Uh, it was supposed to be finished in April of 2019. Um, but of course, all kinds of things come up in the construction industry and it hasn't actually been finished just yet. It's very close. If you live in the Phoenix area, you can drive by it. It's on 32nd Street, just south of Indian School um, on the southeast kind of corner. Um, and it's pretty incredible. So I was at Architect Town for two years. Um, I 
Uh, and then I did move on to another firm. Um, you might find that certain firms just aren't quite your fit and that's totally okay. Um, you know, the best way to get to find what your niche is is to, I think, try a few different places. Um, so uh, Christy, oh, and this was an award-winning project, uh, won an on the board, on the boards um, project, on the boards award for, um, with the International Interior Design Association or IIDA. Um, so it'll probably win quite a few more awards coming up. Uh, thanks, Chrissy. <laughs> okay, so this one to uh, have a little breather in between uh, when I was at Architecton and my current job. Um, on the left, you see uh, that uh, is actually a classroom, part of the design school in the Design North building. That's one of their, their largest lecture halls. Um, when I moved back to Arizona, um, I was approached to actually teach with the design school. Um, so starting in spring of 2016, I started teaching INT 131, so an undergraduate course called Design and Human Behavior. Um, this was a class that I even took actually before I started the graduate school program when I was just kind of feeling out what I wanted to do and if I wanted to do design. Uh, and it really impacted my decision to do this. Um, so now I actually teach the class. I'm about to start my fifth spring semester teaching. Um, and it's really just one of the passions of my career. Um, on the right, I actually did work for another firm after Architecton called Arcful. They're a healthcare architecture firm in Scottsdale. Um, they're a fantastic firm to work for. They have incredible benefits that I've really never seen anywhere else. Um, and that might not be the fun thing to talk about as benefits, but once you're in the real world, unfortunately, that's really important stuff. Um, but they were a very fun team to work for, very uh, dynamic, very um, uh, just a kind place to be. You know, they understood kind of the work-life balance um, and they really supported furthering your educational and professional development. Um, so that was a great place to be and I planned to be there for a very long time. However, uh, I was approached by the firm Jones Studio and I had been applying there for years. I had been wanting to work there for a very long time. And I had a friend who worked there and they approached me um, wanting a marketing person. So I jumped at that chance and left our soul a bit earlier than I would probably advocate for somebody else. Um, but if you do go to the next slide, um, this is where I currently am. So I was hired by Jones Studio to be their director of marketing. Uh, it was a pretty generous title, but I appreciate and now want to make sure I earn that title. Um, this is a really incredible firm. We are 15 people. Uh, in this beautiful office in Tempe that we built, designed and built ourselves. Uh, we do have a pet turtle named Timmy or a desert tortoise named Timmy um, and people bring their dogs into work. Um, so it's, it's been a really fun place. Uh, actually in the bottom right, uh, last spring, we filmed a video, we brought a film crew in and filmed a video of our work um, to submit for a design award. Um, unfortunately, we didn't get it this year or last year, so this year. No, it is last year, finally. Oh my gosh, 2020 is over. Okay, um, <laughs> I just can't get over it. Okay, um, so we're gonna apply again for that award this year. Uh, and my job here, um, what I actually, if you wanna go to the next slide again, Christy, I can kind of outline what marketing looks like and why I chose to um, go into this. So I did mention that I have a journalism public relations background um, and then also the psychology and interior architecture then. Um, and it really ended up just fitting, right? My background was very diverse. Um, a lot of those who go into marketing for the AEC industry um, don't have that design background. And I found that it's really been invaluable to me as I shifted into kind of this role again. Um, so, Marketing for AEC is in fact different than marketing for general like business to business or business to consumer stuff. So it's different than like a marketing person for um, what's a good brand, Patagonia or something. Um, so marketing for AEC, that's considered a professional industry um, or professional services industry. Um, so AEC is architecture, engineering and construction. Um, and we're very business to business. We're always selling to other businesses. Um, so you you work a little bit differently, right? You don't necessarily have um, people signing up for your email newsletter, and then you put something into your shopping cart, and 10 minutes later, you 
click out, out of the website, you haven't, you've decided not to buy something, and then 10 minutes later, you get an email like, did you forget to, that you had something in your cart? Um, we don't do that, right? So we're trying to sell uh, buildings, we're trying to sell a service to design those buildings um, or other projects. So it ends up being a very different experience. So what happens is there's these six domains of research or six domains of practice within marketing. So we have marketing research. Um, we do a lot of research on what different markets look like. So my current firm practices in almost every market, um, except for like healthcare and development. Um, so I end up researching a lot of different markets in the Phoenix area or the Arizona area, or when we try to branch out to other geographies. Um, marketing planning is deciding ahead of time what kind of projects you want to be going after so that you have the best odds of then winning them. Um, client and business development is also part of the job. So researching the clients that you want to get, getting to know them and understanding their needs and wants before you actually start to respond to a project or request for qualification and RFQ. Um, and then there's the proposals. And this um, is really fun for me. I actually love a good deadline. I think the journalism background did that to me where deadlines by the hour rather than every couple of weeks. Um, but it also involves a lot of graphic design, a lot of creativity, um, a lot of presenting your firm and why you're the best firm to do this project. Um, promotional activity or things like social media, um, your website. So we're working on redesigning our own website, um, a redesign right now, um, all kinds of graphic design, um, and then management. So like I actually said um, earlier is being really involved in the leadership process. Um, so even as an emerging professional, you could really be part of the leadership team and making decisions for the direction of your firm. Um, I do still get pulled into the design side occasionally when they need extra help. Um, I do come in and I still get to design. So I didn't have to fully give that up to do marketing, uh, but I do love the day-to-day -day kind of rush of marketing and getting to do something different every single day. And that's all I have. Perfect. Um, hi, everyone. My name is Kiana Tai, and we can go to the next slide. So I started my journey at ASU in 2011 in the undergraduate program where I studied interior design and sustainability. And then I was getting ready to graduate in 2015 and at the time was not happy with my portfolio and just felt like there are a number of gaps in my experience due to majority of our projects being group projects. And so um, I went right into the MIA program that fall. And I took those next two years as, you know, this was the time if there were any missed opportunities during undergrad, this was kind of the time to do it and make up for it. And so one of those things was studying abroad. I never had the opportunity to do that during undergrad. And so I was fortunate enough to study abroad, not once, but twice. Uh, the first time was in the summer in Rome in Paris with Jose Bernardi. And then again that fall um, with my studio, again with Jose Bernardi, um, we studied abroad in Venice and that was a part of our coursework and included in the tuition. Um, and then when I graduated in 2017, I started working at Gensler Phoenix, which is where I am now. Um, and I'm now recently NCIDQ certified, which I'm a huge advocate of for our industry. And that was a huge accomplishment of mine. So I'm just happy to kind of check that off the list. Let me go to the next slide. So um, just a high level look at some of the work um, I did in the MIA program. So one of our earlier semesters, we had a workplace studio with Rachel Rosso. She was actually one of, um, in one of Kirsten's photos um, and she's the workplace guru. And her studio was a great experience because we had a real client and we had a real site. So our client was Caleb Alvarado, who is an architect turned photographer. And I believe he's also an ASU alum. And then our site was um, a historic warehouse in downtown Phoenix. And Caleb would come in our studio all the time and we do visioning sessions and workshops. So we were actually truly designing for him. And then um, the concept um, that we came up with, my partner and I, was um, called The Stage, and it was all about this idea of elevating Caleb and his team and essentially having their work on display for the local community in Phoenix. Uh, next slide. And then um, another semester, uh, we had a retail studio, and then this class was with Jose Bernardi. 
And he allowed us the freedom to select our own tenants and our own site. So um, for the tenants, I imagined kind of this dream team of Camelback Flower Shop, Tespressa, and Rue's Cake House, which are three um, small local businesses in town. And the owners all happen to be coincidentally friends with each other. So I thought they were kind of the perfect trio. And then the site, I selected a historic warehouse in downtown Phoenix, which is now the Tuft and Needle headquarters. So if you've been over there, they have a beautiful space. And really the topic for this semester was historic preservation. And so that's kind of where the concept stemmed was allowing the bones of the warehouse and the infrastructure to kind of speak for themselves and just, you know, keeping the palette and the design very simple and neutral. Next slide. And then our last semester in the MIA program um, was a hospitality studio with Beth Harmon Vaughn, who at the time was the managing director of our Gensler Phoenix office. And Gensler was working on um, a renovation of the Renaissance Hotel in Phoenix. And they did this robust activation study of Adams Street, which is the street that the hotel opens up to. And they talked about the walkability and having um, drawing those users into the hotel and so really um, the goal here was having the seamless indoor outdoor um, connection. Um, for me, that meant biophilia and incorporating biophilic elements. And then also again, drawing in the users from the exterior and bringing in that additional revenue for the hotel. Uh, next slide. So I have two slides in here talking about IIDA. I think community involvement is so important, um, mostly because um, in undergrad, I was not a part of any sort of design oriented organizations. And when I graduated, I was not only unhappy with my portfolio, but I had essentially a blank resume. I had no awards. I had no volunteer experience. And that was a huge regret of mine. So going into the MIA program, I made um, a true effort of being involved in some organization in town. And IADA ended up just being the perfect fit. And they have a lot of student events, um, several throughout the year. So within one year, I participated in as many as I could and was able to win a number of awards. And so on the right um, is a photo from the Student Design Shura, and that's an annual event. And my team won the local event. We advanced to regionals. And then on the top left, um, IIDA has their annual Pride Awards, which recognizes excellence in our industry. And so they do have a student category, and I submitted two projects, both of which won. And then on the bottom left, um, IIDA has a fashion show called Couture, which um, occurs every two years. And again, they do have a student category. So I teamed up with some of my MIA classmates, and we submitted a design, and that won Best of Show for the student category as well. Next slide. And then continuing on with IIDA as a professional was really a seamless transition for me. Um, I was especially passionate about all the student events, having just been a student. And so I volunteered for some of the committees um, for the student design charrette and other events that they had throughout the year. And then within a year of working at Gensler, um, a board position opened up for the VP of Student Affairs. And so that was most aligned with my interests and my passions. And so I was in that role for two years and it was an amazing experience for me. It, I learned a lot of leadership skills. I was able to kind of host my own events. We had a number of board retreats and you're kind of working with the greatest um, designers in our market and in our industry. And then I even had the opportunity to travel for the student design trip. So I'm a big advocate of having some sort of community involvement, regardless of what the organization is. And IIDA is just one of many in town. Um, but this was a very much a pivotal moment for me. And, you know, coming from undergrad where I had nothing, I knew I had to kind of pivot. And so um, I think it's really important to not only network and kind of build your resume, but just also distinguish yourself from your classmates. Uh, next slide. So um, taking a look at some of the projects I've been working on since graduation. Um, so really the first project I worked on at Gensler was the Monroe, which is a high rise building in downtown Phoenix. And we did um, a number of work through throughout the building, but really the heart of the project was the amenity floor, which is the photography shown here. And in the top right image, you can see the glass kind of inserted into the brick. And originally that was all brick and there was no daylighting in the space. And so we were able to um, 
plug in the glass and accommodate a small balcony. And that just completely changed the space. You know, the building truly became a beacon at night. And so if you walk or drive by here, which I do all the time, I coincidentally live near this, um, but it truly looks like the photo. So the space is completely illuminated. You can see the amazing design inside and it was an amazing branding moment for the Monroe. And so um, a number of organizations since then have hosted their events here. And so it's been a really amazing kind of experience seeing the space used as we intended. Uh, next slide. And then we have been working with a Fortune 500 company um, on their call center for the past almost two to three years now, um, both interior and exterior scope. And the photography here specifically was from their amenity floor, which was the first floor of the building. And um, this was a fun project because there are a number of different space types. So we had um, an auditorium, we had a large scale break room, um, conferencing center and you interview rooms, um, a fitness center. So having all of these different design elements, we needed a really strong cohesive concept. And that was based off of the landscape in Arizona, specifically looking at the contrast between peaks and valleys. And so um, that project wrapped up and actually won an award this year, an IIDA Award of Merit. Uh, next slide. And then what we are currently working on and have been working on for almost a year now is Insight's new headquarters in Chandler, Arizona. Um, and Insight is a tech company that currently occupies several buildings in Tempe. And so we will be consolidating their 1500 employees and they'll be working in this new space hopefully soon. Um, but so Insight, um, they have clients like Microsoft and Apple. And so being this kind of innovative leader in their industry, they will potentially walk Microsoft and Apple um, execs through this space. And so although the building is in Chandler, the design needed to have kind of the equivalent caliber of what you see in the Silicon Valley. And so having that wow experience for those guest users was really important. And so we have a grand staircase that connects the two floors. We have an amazing lobby experience where Insight is investing millions of dollars in digital experience design and tech to kind of show off their capabilities and um, a number of branding opportunities. Um, so that's kind of been an amazing component that for the first time our team has been working with. Um, and Gensler does have a whole digital experience design studio, but that's been it's been fun to kind of finally activate that and kind of put it into place. And so this project is currently in development. Uh, next slide. And then um, just a few photos again of what I've been working on um, at Gensler, both internally and externally out of the office. Um, so of course, continuing my involvement with IIDA. And then I'm a part of a small group in our office that focuses on broker initiatives. Um, so very similar to Kirsten and kind of talking about that marketing effort. So how does a firm position themselves in the local market um, and Gensler being an international firm, what does that mean for our Phoenix office? And so um, we try to market ourselves as much as possible to the brokers in town. And um, so the image there is from a, a happy hour we did with CBRE in their space that we designed. And then um, on the bottom left, something you have to look forward to is oftentimes our clients will have um, ribbon cutting ceremonies once the project is completed and occupied. And so um, our team was able to attend um, the opening of one of our projects and then networking events, of course. And then um, on the bottom right, I was fortunate enough to have been selected as one of the great diverse designers for the Say It Loud exhibit um, for the state of Arizona. And so that was, you know, an honorable recognition and something that just happened this year. And um, that's about it for now. That's what I've been up to. And if there's any questions, please let me know. All right, thank you so much to all of our panelists for presenting. So I'm gonna just briefly um, go through the application process um, and then we'll get straight to the uh, Q&A. So um, the application process um, is two parts. Um, the first is the graduate college application, and that's going to be very uh, similar to other applications you've filled out for schools before. Um, just kind of information about yourself, previous education history. Um, you will upload your unofficial transcripts when you submit the application. You don't have to send official copies until after you've been admitted. Um, and then if you're an international student, you'll need to provide proof of English proficiency, and the GRE scores are only uh, required for select degrees. The MIA program does not require the GRE. Um, 
but, and this year we've also been waiving the GRE for the programs that do require it. So that's the PhD program and the Master of Science in Architecture. Um, so uh, nothing, no GRE to worry about. <laughs> um, and then we've got the slide room application. That's the second uh, part to this. Um, this is really more specific to the design school. This is what the admissions committees are gonna be focusing on when they evaluate you. Um, so this is where you want to put your really all of your efforts into. Um, so you're going to be required to submit a portfolio. A note about this, if you're applying for the three plus program, um, meaning that you do not have a bachelor's degree in interior design or architecture, um, you are still required to submit a portfolio. Um, but this can be any kind of creative outlet that you have, you can, you can use in the portfolio. So say you do photography, drawing, painting, um, you refinish furniture, um, we've had uh, nail designers uh, submit photos of the, the nail art. Um, famously, we had a sushi chef um, submit a photo of these beautifully arrayed sushi rolls. So you can get really creative with a portfolio for the three plus. Um, if you're applying for the two year, they do want to see um, more of a traditional design portfolio with work that you did in your undergrad. Um, you'll also need to do submit a statement of purpose, um, just kind of a, a basic, you know, why ASU, why interior design, what are your goals, um, get to get, you know, some more information about yourself so that the admissions committee can get to know you. Um, and then you'll need the email addresses for two recommenders. Um, they will automatically be sent a link to upload the recommendation for you. Um, so no paper copies needed, nothing needs to be mailed. Um, and that's all there is to it. Um, so we are in the midst of our application cycle. Our priority deadline is quickly approaching on January 15th. Um, after this, we will still have a rolling admissions deadline to the 15th of each month. Um, so there's still time to apply, but if you wanna be considered for funding opportunities, um, we strongly encourage you to apply by the priority deadline of January 15th. And if you have any issues or questions about any of the application process, um, please reach out to us. Um, I've got a contact information slide coming up. Um, so this is an important uh, link that you might wanna jot down, um, this, these resources for new students. This is where we have posted um, important links, some frequently asked questions, and most importantly, a lot of the webinar recordings that we've been doing um, over the past year. So um, lots of information to be found. Um, there's even a portfolio tips webinar that I recommend you take a look at if you have questions about the portfolio. Um, please bookmark this site and check it out. So this is the contact information. Um, uh, like I said, myself and my counterpart, Corey, who you may have communicated with already, um, we manage the graduate programs. Um, you've got our individual email addresses there and our phone numbers, but I recommend using the big bold design grad at asu.edu to reach out to us. That goes to both of us. So um, your email will always get looked at whether one of us is on vacation or out of the office. Um, it's just generally easier to get a response um, from, from either of us. Um, and then once we're back in person, we are located in the Design North uh, building, room 162. Um, you can come by and see us. <laughs> so this is um, our Instagram. Uh, please follow us if you wanna get updates on uh, student work, things going on at the design school, different events, other webinars. Um, highly encourage you to follow us. And now we're at the important Q&A portion. So I'm gonna go ahead and stop sharing my screen. And if you have any questions, um, please put them in the Q&A and we will get to them. So, um, oh, they're already starting to come in. So um, what did, why did you guys pick interior architecture instead of interior design for the masters? So we at ASU only have the interior architecture program, but for those of you who looked at other schools, what made uh, the MIA program stand out? I'll let you take it away. I can go first. Um, I actually applied to UCLA and their program and um, was very much confirmed that I was going to attend there. I packed up all my things. My parents and I caravan to LA and I attended the orientation and it was not the right fit for me whatsoever. And I believe their program is interior architecture, um, but their program in particular is catered to people who have, they're pursuing design as kind of a second career. And so um, there were nurses and accountants and the classes went from like 6 p.m. to 10 p.m. So these people are attending classes kind of after their day job. 
and they gave you a 10 year period to complete your master's degree, which is crazy. So for me, it was very much get in, get out. I wanted to wrap this up and I actually got approved um, to finish that program and that degree in one year as opposed to two years. But they did not seem kind of concerned about the individual student and there were no scholarships. And so um, my parents and I woke up the next morning. We had no idea what to do. And we drove back to ASU. We had packed up all my stuff again. And um, on the drive back, we emailed Jose Bernardi, who at the time was the director of the design program. And he met us at a local library. He brought projects and we felt completely at ease. And again, doing my undergrad at ASU, I, I knew that ASU is very much focused on the indiv individual student and the design program is smaller. The classes are 30 people or less. And he mentioned the study abroad aspect, which is kind of encompassed in the program and included in your tuition, which I don't think any other program in the country does. And he mentioned, you know, there's a number of TA, um, TA positions. And so that can cover half your tuition, which again, a number of other schools don't offer. And so for me, that was just a huge contrast. And so um, I was willing to sacrifice UCLA and kind of that name and reputation reputation because I knew ASU would take care of me and already Jose meeting me in a library like my family and I were desperate I could already sense that they would take care of me and I would have a much better experience and so that was the right fit for me and um, although it was two years as opposed to one year um, I think it worked out and again ASU is doing a lot of things that another a lot of other programs in the country are not doing so they're very innovative in that sense. Anyone else want to chime in on this one? Yeah, uh, my experience was a little bit different. For one, I was doing this to change careers. Um, I, I think it's absolutely beneficial um, to come into design with a different experience. Um, certainly, I would have loved to have the four-year undergrad experience as well, um, if I could kind of rethink my trajectory. Um, but since I didn't, and knowing what I brought to design from psychology, from journalism and PR, even though it seems so unrelated, that particular degree, um, being able to communicate, being able to communicate your design concepts, being able to be clear and concise, um, you're communicating with clients all of the time. Um, so it ended up actually really benefiting me in that sense. Um, in the same vein, uh, because I was applying in 2012, um, I was part of the very first cohort of the Master of Interior Architecture program um, and the three plus program. Um, so this is the first time they were gonna be running this. Um, I knew I wanted to stay in Arizona, so it is the only place that I applied, um, but it made me feel a little bit safe because I was changing careers. I needed some kind of stability in that, um, but I absolutely loved my experience. Um, I will, you know, out from top of the Grand Canyon about my experience, about my relationships with my instructors. Um, I know the cohorts have grown since I uh, started, but my cohort was four people, um, again, because it was the first year, but I know those people so well now and still to this day, one of them is a bridesmaid in my upcoming wedding. Um, so there are lifelong friendships. Um, I still, you know, oftentimes seek references from those who are my instructors, but like I said, they're my colleagues now. Um, I get to work with them every spring semester. Um, Jose Bernardi, she mentioned, you know, both a couple of you guys have mentioned, um, really any of them, they're incredible. They're so passionate about what they do. More importantly, they're passionate about teaching. Um, and what they understand about this program is that it shouldn't be all academic. Studying design is not all about theory. So you should get some of that certainly, um, but they make sure to bring professionals in to help teach you. Um, to, to help teach you, to help guide you and critique you along the way, because you will be critiqued. Um, and that's okay. It fosters better uh, relationships. It fosters better design. Um, and similar to Kiana, I was able to study abroad. So not only as part of my senior year, uh, senior year, final year of the master's program, um, I actually did two immersive programs over my, over the summers in between years. So, um, those ones were not included, but I was able to apply for travel scholarships to cover both of those. So the first one I went to um, Barcelona, Paris, and Switzerland with Jose Bernardi, which was an incredible experience. He's just one of my most favorite people. Um, and then the second year I went to um, Italy and Greece with actually one of the landscape um, professors at the time. I'm not sure that he's with ASU right now, or I think he retired. 
Um, but again, an incredible experience to go get to study design, even if it's just for a couple of weeks in another part of the world. Um, and just being part of the academic clubs and organizations, it really changed my professional life around. Um, I, I love ASU and that's why I choose to still be part of it. Wonderful, thank you. So we've got lots of questions in here. Um, so can the panelists talk about internships and studio night a little? So I'll, before I get going, let pass this off. I just wanna make a note. So internships are required for this program. Um, typically students will do this in the summer between before their final year in the program. Um, and studio night is an event that we host in the spring prior to that summer semester um, where we invite design professionals from all over the valley to come and meet our students. Um, they have their portfolios on display. Um, it's just kind of an informal networking event meant to help match interns with firms who need interns. Um, this year we're doing it virtually, um, but typically this is done um, in person. So with that being said, anyone have any feedback on their internship experience and uh, studio night? Uh, I can I can go ahead with this. So um, it was actually a really good experience. Uh, professors uh, help a lot at ASU and I uh, coming uh, from India, coming as an international student, I really didn't have any idea about uh, the market here or didn't have a lot of contacts here, but uh, professors and uh, uh, colleagues, they were very helpful and studio night especially was such a good experience or such a great event. Um, we learned to create uh, our portfolios, uh, professors gu uh, guided us, uh, not just resumes, but like, you know, uh, creating, marketing ourselves, like, you know, creating the uh, business cards or creating our uh, content online. They taught us uh, or they guided us uh, in that uh, event. Um, and Phoenix is really like, I, I think it's uh, a really a good place uh, to get a lot of internships. I myself went out of state for internship, but uh, I interviewed with a lot of local firms and uh, it's a great opportunity uh, to get an internship. And I think internships help you a lot, not just uh, during the program, but after the program to get uh, your full-time jobs. I will chime in and say that um, Studio Night was essential for me, and that's how I was able to get my internship. I applied to, I think, 10 to 20 other firms um, outside of Studio Night, and I didn't even hear back from more than half of them. And I wouldn't consider that alarming. That seemed like the case for most of my classmates. Um, but I knew sort of from day one that I wanted to work for a large firm like Gensler, or Perkins and Will, or Smith Group, and I never heard back from those firms. And so. I ended up interning at a small um, small commercial firm in town and I went into it thinking like this was not me whatsoever and I ended up having the most wonderful experience and because it was smaller they were able to you know walk me through things uh, more detailed um, than maybe a larger firm would and spent more time with me and there's more mentorship than I expected and I think um, knowing how our internships run at Gensler I don't think I would have been successful at a larger firm knowing kind of the attention I wanted. So wherever you end up interning, that does not have to be your full-time job. I would take that as an opportunity as a summer to explore maybe something you wouldn't typically do, um, whether that's kind of like the market they're working in or the size of the firm. So wherever you end up um, or wherever you get an interview, I just wouldn't dismiss it initially kind of based off what you're reading online or kind of what you're seeing. Um, really anything can be a great experience if you make the most of it. And as you wrap up your internship, just make sure you end on good terms and network and remain in contact with the people that you're working with. Great advice. <laughs> So since we're getting close on time, I want to, we'll kind of move through these a little fast. Um, so just so we can get everything done. So um, we have a current student who says, um, I'm currently enrolled in the MIA 3 plus program. The summer 2020 semester was canceled due to COVID. Will there be a summer semester given in 2021? And if so, can students from the 2020 cohort attend these classes? So there will be a summer semester, as far as I know. Um, I'm not sure as far as planning with the pandemic has really only gone through spring as far as I know, um, but we're planning to have the summer semester. Um, 
because this is a because you're already enrolled in that program and the summer semester is really that crash course for students entering the program um, to get kind of dip their toes in design um, they kind of get the run of the school it's just the three plus students there um, you've already really experienced design um, so in this first year in the program in the fall and the spring semester. So you really don't necessarily need to go back and redo a summer semester. So there are gonna be elective courses that you could take, um, but you won't be required to take those studio classes or those other required courses that were waived for you and in, in your cohort. So, um, and if you have any other questions about that, please reach out to me, uh, designgrad at azu.edu. I'm um, happy to talk to you one-on-one -on -one about it. Um, what do you think are good jobs or clubs to join as students, especially when everything is online? Uh, I can speak to that a little. I know, you know, Kiana is highly involved in IIDA. They have a great student chapter, um, and that's kind of the IB sex, if I believe, but you can talk more to that. There's the other option, American Institute of Architecture students, so AIAS, if you feel like you kind of toe that line between interiors and architecture. Um, that's the group that I was part of. Um, I can't speak to what online events that they have going on right now, um, unfortunately, but I do know that as kind of a national organization, they're still doing like their national conference, um, although I believe virtually. Um, so there's still a lot happening with that group. There's also NOMA, so the National Organization of Minority Architects. That's a very important group to get involved in, um, regardless of who you are or kind of what group you might consider yourself part or, um, part of. Um, they do a lot right now and they're very impactful on the industry in the Phoenix area and nationally. Um, there's LASSO, which is the Latin American oh, uh, Students of Architecture. I don't know that one. Um, but they've been very active. Um, they were doing some very cool things in the last couple of years. Um, gosh, I feel like there's more that I'm not thinking of. Any there's of them are going to be great. There's also, um, and those are good ones too, NOMA is a really important one. Um, there's ULI, which is the Urban Land In Institute. Um, there's PCA, which is the Phoenix Community Alliance, and they have a number of different kind of subcommittees um, that you can join. And then um, I'm trying to think what else. NAOP is another one that's kind of more um, based around brokers, but kind of if you want to network, that's like a good starting one as well. But ASID and IIDA are interior focused. IIDA is international, ASID is national, and ASID tends to be more residential. So if that's your passion and interest, I would maybe kind of go there. Um, but if you want to start with IIDA, um, the website for our local organization is IIDASW.org, uh, which stands for Southwest. And I just posted in the chat uh, the link to the student organizations for the design school so you can kind of look through all of them. Um, so how did you all prepare for studio night? Uh, I think you have touched on that. Studio night for me was a little bit different um, because I was in on the board of directors. I actually had to be traveling. I was, it was mandatory that I go to Washington DC during that time. Um, so while I, I did put together a resume and a portfolio um, and I printed them out and had my uh, classmate um, kind of present on my behalf, um, but I was fortunate enough to have uh, acquired an internship actually during the fall semester before the required summer. Um, so I worked at Gould Evans in Phoenix for their Canary group. Um, and I was actually there from October until uh, the end of summer and that was a great term to work for too very creative a lot of interiors and graphic design so i can't really speak to studio night i'm sorry and if this is from a it's it's from an anonymous attendee but if this is a current student um studio night will be virtual this year like i said so preparing is going to look a little different than it would in the traditional year um but we will be hosting um a kind of training prep session for the handshake system. So um, you'll be getting reminders about that. Please email design grad if you, you should have already received an email about it, but if you didn't see that, send me an email and I'm happy to send you the, the dates for those training sessions. Anyone else have anything to add before we move on to the next? Okay. Um, so do you think having a master's degree is more favorable when going into the design industry? 
Um, I can start off. I feel very strongly about this. And I see the next question from Emily kind of ties into this as well. Um, but I will be candid and say that a handful of people have told me that um, a master's degree in interiors is unnecessary. I've even had one person tell me it was useless because my undergrad was in interiors. Um, but I feel very strongly that it was the right path for me. And again, I was graduating undergrad with feeling completely uncomfortable um, presenting my portfolio. I didn't feel comfortable talking about the projects in there to local firms because I couldn't quite distinguish what was mine versus another teammates. I just felt like the waters were very much muddied. And um, those additional two years in the MI program were exactly what I needed to kind of dial in on those gaps in my knowledge and figure out who I was as a designer. So no, I don't think it's required, but everyone's path is different. And my family is a big advocate for furthering your education. And I talked about Beth Harmon Vaughn, who taught a number of courses in the MIA program. Um, and she was, again, running our Phoenix office at the time. She not only has a master's, she has a PhD. So I tried to surround myself with people that valued the degree and um, dismiss the ones that don't. Um, so I'm curious if our other panelists have kind of experienced that, but it's just funny because in our office, we have a number of architects who have both an undergrad and a master's in architecture and no one says anything to them. So I don't know, you know, this misconception with interiors where it kind of comes from, but I think um, it's all about furthering yourself and kind of bettering yourself as a designer. Everyone's path is different. No, it's not required, but um, work for firms that will value that and that the time you put in and spent, you know, that's a lot of money and time you're putting into your master's degree. So work for people and spend your time with people that will value it. I, I also had very similar experience uh, as Kiana did. Um, my undergrad was architecture and a lot of people did tell me not only just that you don't need a master's, but specifically, why do you need a master's in interior architecture when you already have an undergrad in architecture? But I totally agree with uh, Kiana that it's it's such a different experience and it's something that you choose. I also feel that um, at the time when I joined architecture program, I was so young and I so I was so naive. I didn't know a lot of things. I didn't know what I was getting into. And in interior architecture program, I was uh, I had uh, more focus uh, of what I wanted to do. And um, something that's also um, something that is uh, interior architecture program is more, I think more research based, you are uh, focusing more on yourself, like the studios are very small. Um, you get to uh, you get to like I think uh, explore your leadership skills. Uh, you can join like you know a uh, lot of groups. Uh, you get to study abroad. I think it's I, I think it's more uh, focused on your interest if you are looking for something like that. And uh, if I, I I really think that uh, if you want to do it, I don't think uh, anyone telling you. Uh, what it does or what it does not do for you is important and it, it will definitely help you in the long run. And it's also fun. Mm -hmm. um, so just real fast, I don't, I can't quite answer that question the same as I don't have the undergrad in interior design. From the perspective of an instructor, one thing that I see and while we have, you know, I, I teach in the interior design program, we have some incredible, incredible students who I know are going to go on even just with a bachelor's degree to do incredible things. Um, what I wish that I could tell a lot of my students, um, particularly because they're in their freshman yearly, right, is what you choose. It's what you choose to take in. It's what you choose to be involved in. It's how you choose to further what knowledge you want to continue to gain. Um, and that's why I would continue to go through with education um, if you can. If you have the means to do it, uh, I would choose to do it now because you might regret and it can be harder to go back later. Um, I actually do have to run though. So Christy, thank you very much um, for this. Feel free to give out my email if people have questions. Um, I'm super happy to participate um, and help you guys along the way. So thank you all to all of our incredible panelists and I'm going to let everyone go since we are running over. So thank you all again for joining us. And um, if you have any questions, send us an email to designgrad at ASU.edu. Have a good night, everyone. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Good luck. Thank you. Good luck.